Welcome back to another Real Talk Reaction for Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 7, Episode 10, so close to the end, no fits. Right. Ugh, last episode. Tick -tock. All the anxiety. Tick -tock. Um, okay, so we have quite a handful of comments to feature from last Let's episode, go. which I totally get because last episode was one of my top favorite episodes of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. ever, and that is saying a lot. Um, so let's start with um, comments from our patrons first from episode 9. First starting with executive producer Liz Sith, okay. who comes through to say, Love the reaction, guys. I loved everything about this episode except that last scene with the cardboard villain and the sidekick who wanted to die in the previous episode because she didn't want to harm anyone with her powers. But now she likes it, and I agree with you guys. That was an unnecessary scene. This episode was my favorite episode so far. Also, I love Daisy and Coulson in this episode, and they did an amazing job. Rest in peace, Enoch. I'm really sad that he had to sacrifice himself to save the team, but it's a fitting send-off. Mm -hmm. Also, I love the final scene between Daisy, Colson, Enoch. That was informative and endearing. But like Jay Rabbit, I was confused and concerned, too, because Enoch kept referring to Fitz in the past tense. Also love the Daniel uh, Sosa and Daisy time loop romance. Can't wait for the next episode. Fingers crossed we get Fitz. Yeah. Um, Christopher Simeon responded to Lissa's comments with, I may be one of the few who actually doesn't mind Nathaniel and Cora scenes because I see what the writers are doing. Cora is Daisy in season two, and the way Jing is now is now supposed to parallel how S.H.I.E.L.D. was in Season 2. Mm. Jean wants to protect Korra like S.H.I.E.L.D. wanted to protect Daisy. They don't know how to control her powers, so they try to contain it or get rid of it. Remember how easily Daisy was manipulated and how she sided with her mom. That's what is happening here, but with Nathaniel being Jean in this situation. The wine glasses are a callback to the same scene with Daisy in Season 2 when she had her make music with her powers. It represents Nathaniel only showing Cora the destructive nature of her powers and not anything else, unlike Jing, who showed Daisy both. Lee is representing the real shield. He only saw a threat and tried to kill her. Um, then Lisith comment back on that. I just think this was a great dialogue because I I can see both perspectives. Uh, Christopher's Christopher, I agree with you regarding the direction the writers wanted to go, but my main annoyance is with the actor who plays Nathaniel. He is the worst actor to be in this amazing <laughs> show. <laughs> also, I understand yeah. what the writers are trying to do with Daisy and Cora parallel, but Daisy was influenced easily by her long-lost mother, not some random stranger. Even then, it was never her intention to harm innocent people or her own inhuman kind for pleasure, especially in the last episode, you want to die to avoid harming anyone, but now she is fine with it. Maybe if they had someone else play Nathaniel, I could get behind it but for yeah. the final season for this amazing show it's not good enough for me trash um then yeah. doug cowell comes through to say so much fun so sad and yeah i agree that fitz is already dead or something equally horrific given that reaction from Gemma to her own memories yeah so now i'm even more afraid of the rest of the season yeah Ugh. and don't forget uh you not told them i mean y'all not gonna be a team after this anyway so yeah but I that mean, could mean a lot of things that doesn't necessarily mean they're gonna die um anyways uh, Steve Haynes comes through to say, this genuinely was an incredible episode in so many ways. The time loop thing is being used more and more, it seems, but it does genuinely still work as a trope. They really nailed it here. Star Trek The Next Generation has my favorite version of this by far. Just seen it? No, that's Next Generation. Oh, Generation, yeah. Um, Discovery we did. Anyway, I can't help but be disappointed that they moved forward with with the filming without the actor playing Fitz. I get that he was busy, but he's a key pillar of the team, and to have the last season show him in what amounts to be a featured player role just feels disrespectful. Yeah. I really could not care less about the silly, let's still in human powers with blood transfusions back in the 1980s plan going on. <laughs> Nobody can. Obviously, that is the one thing they could have did without. Uh, it feels like just an excuse to push Hydra back into the show for the last season. It's yeah. not compelling as it is, no. but knowing there are just a few episodes left to resolve it means that it'll likely be featured heavily at the end, which is brutally disappointing for me. Um, Victor McPhee comments, they had no choice about Fitz. The actor couldn't film very much, so it was this or nothing, I assume. And if you were paying attention, you know that Nathaniel is not Hydra. He doesn't follow their beliefs. He's an outsider, which is why I personally enjoy him as a villain in the fight between Daisy's sister, Cora, and Daisy. I it's feel still, it's going to be yeah. a badass. Yeah, I love that everybody just, has a different perspective yeah, about it, though. It, it, just, it just doesn't matter right now. Um, then Bjorn comes through to say, This whole episode was amazing and sad at the same time. The actor who played Enoch really deserves an award. To play a robotic character with a blank stare and yet being able to transport so much emotion is truly 
the acting master class. Yeah. I hope Coulson's takeaway is that even machines are able to fail. Me too. I really, I mean, don't get me started. I think that's what we got from that last thing that Coulson, you know, he should be able to feel emotion. Um, the comment about surviving but not as a team really gives you a sense of finality since this is the end. What the hell did Gemma remember? Did you know that she directed this episode? I didn't, but no. a couple of you guys comment about that. That is so oh, freaking okay. exciting. Damn. Um, I refuse Good to job. believe that Fitz is dead. This t is time travel after all. I'm excited and a little anxious to move forward, but I am confident that S.H.I.E.L.D. won't let me down since they never have. Have a great day, guys. Um, thank you. Thank you, yeah. And then Feather comes through to say, Incredible episode all around. Groundhog Day stories are notoriously difficult to direct produce, and Elizabeth Henstridge did a phenomenal job for her yeah. directorial debut. Um, especially because she also had to be in the episode for Gemma's scenes, and then she knocked it out of the park there, too. She did. She's a truly talented artist. Good job, because that was a great episode. That was amazing. Uh, love the Daisy and Coulson team up. One of my favorite dynamics in the show. Really reminded me of the early seasons, especially season one. Their banter and camaraderie is unlike anything else. Coulson's frantic hysteria and Daisy's increasing frustration with the time loops for comedic go. It was so good. Yeah. Uh, that death montage with the team was ridiculously funny. I love dark humor like that. Yeah. Oh, that's I just I would watch that episode over and over again. Uh, Phil M.D.'s existential crisis, on the other hand, is so heart-wrenching. I'm just hurting so much for him. And the parallel with Enoch and their connection there. Beautiful. I really hope that somehow he can reconcile his feelings of otherness, or if not, find peace. I think it really may be time to let this man rest. That Daisy uh, Sosa connection was gorgeous. Daisy waking uh, each loop to find Sosa by her side, always willing to help her sacrifice, no matter the craziest of tasks she puts to him. Mm. She needs this in her life so much. I loved her taking a loop for herself to really interrogate her own feelings and explore uh, his in such an honest and frank way. And then she gets so overwhelmed by his consistency and care in the next loop that she just has to kiss him. But then he doesn't remember it because the loop reset, so it's just something that Daisy has hidden in her mind. My god, this ship has has me in a headlock. I can't wait to see how it all plays out. Yeah. Lastly, but never least, Enoch. I adore him so much. I have loved him from the moment they properly showcased him in the Season 5 premiere. He has been a delightful addition to our team, and Joel Stop uh, Stopper's performance has been magical these past three seasons. Yes. I am really going to miss that kooky space robot anthropologist. Um, I already read that comment. Um, and then Feather also adds her own perspective on the, the uh, Nathaniel situation. I don't mind Nathaniel either. He's an easily hateable villain. He's basically a spoiled rich Nazi Hydra douchebag sociopath. Yeah, you know. <laughs> well, I'll say it. Uh, he dresses and acts like a villain from a 90s cyberpunk movie, which fits with the throwback theme of the season. Mm -hmm. He'll serve his purpose and then die. <laughs> Sybil yeah. and Cora are the most interesting antagonists. Sybil is interesting because she's obviously playing the longest game in history. She's playing the ultimate 3D chess with our team, and they are barely keeping up. Mm -hmm. Cora, on the other hand, is mirroring Daisy, as you pointed out. I have an inkling that she may not go as far down the path of villainy as we think. <clears throat> as for her quick turn to Nathaniel, I feel like people underestimated how trapped and alone she felt at the afterlife. Well, she I have underestimated it, yes. She wasn't only going to kill herself to protect the others, she was also going to kill herself because she felt alone and exhausted by the feelings of constant rejection from other humans. So kill everybody. <coughs> right. It's a very extreme pivot. Uh, she was in utter despair in that field, which made her easily susceptible to Nathaniel. Would it have been a better turn if we'd had tw uh, 22 episodes to explore, uh, to explore all three villains? Absolutely, but with 13 episodes to do it, and the primary focus being on our team, they painted enough broad strokes of core that I'm okay with her trajectory change. Yeah. I guess you just gotta be, though. Yeah, <laughs> that's what we got to deal with. We got, hey. All right, <laughs> and then some with. comments to feature from YouTube as well. Scare one... Square, uh, I feel like you told me how to say this, but I can't remember now. Square One Brent says, Great dialogue by Sosa during his conversation with Daisy as he paid homage to his relationship with Agent Carter by re referencing Daisy's character and personality of being similar to that of Peggy's, while also confessing his true feelings for Daisy. Oh, and as for OP, I meant overpowered. That's what I thought. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, Ghost8386 says, this is my favorite episode this season. Also love the title card repeating an excellent uh, directorial debut by Elizabeth. Yeah. Enoch kicking the 
Enoch kicking the team's ass was excellent, and the team not caring, Enoch killed. Uh, Deke was cold-blooded, even though it was a time loop. That whole montage was just hilarious to me. Rest in peace, Enoch. You were an excellent best friend. I enjoyed the nod to Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, in this episode. I'm the only one who liked Nathaniel Malik as a villain. You're not the only one. There is, there's others. Yeah, there's other people. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the Jeff Barrel says, I don't think Fitz is dead. That would be way too anticlimactic. Um, and also says, best episode of the season. I agree. <laughs> um, the I one agree. says Daisy is her sister and she hasn't been born yet. Daisy hasn't been born yet right. with the timeline. Um, Beacon Hills Bystander says in the comics, Yo-Yo also got, goes by Slingshot, so that name fits with her new upgraded powers too. About Fitz, I'm not sure if anyone has commented about it, but Fitz, actor was busy filming something else, so the scheduling was off, but I'm sure he's going to appear, lol, I feel your pain, though, but at the same time, I'm glad others have been getting more focus and shine like Mac and Yo-Yo. I think that's a good point. Yeah. I just can't have a series finale of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. without Fitz being in it. I'm going to yeah. lose my ever-loving mind. <laughs> I mean, if anything, he would probably <laughs> show up on the last episode, which would make sense. That would be a good send-off. It would have to be really... I'm just going to ball my eyes out. Um, the AES86 says Elizabeth, uh, Elizabeth directed this episode, her first time as a director. Um, Mama Raw, the ever-living, says, I'm thinking Fitz is dead, too. The way Gemma started to break down when her memories started coming back and Enoch saying Fitz was my best friend, past tense. I think the future that Gemma returned from at the end of season six, Fitz died and she had that memory blocked. Yeah. Alright, Thomas Richards says, Dana says, dang, that Enoch death scene. All the tears. Whew, yeah. Great minds think alike. Chris in the comments said exactly what I was thinking and posted on Jimmy Macram's reaction. Uh, Enoch told Daisy that all your friends will survive, but the team will not. When I first watched it, I thought it meant all the main characters will survive, but they won't go on any missions together. Either because the changes to the timeline make some of them never team up, or because they all choose to retire after this. Now I'm realizing Enoch didn't say that Daisy and her friends will all survive, just her friends. I'm mega worried that Daisy's going to die. Oh my gosh, that better not happen. Mm. Um, this show is stressing me out. Gemma's meltdown freaked me out too, but I think it's because she actually did expose Fitz's location by letting them remove her implant. Remember while our team was jumping around, none of the death the removal of Gemma's implant or other changes actually, actually stuck. The Chronicle predictor Sybil could have been could have seen the time branch where Fitz's location was exposed and now may know where he is. Maybe Gemma's crying utterance of "Oh no, what have I done? What have I done? I'm so sorry." Were her being sorry for exposing Fitz to the Chronicoms. My nerves are a wreck. This show, man. Totally yeah. agree. Yeah, all those things. <laughs> I feel every, all, all those that. Things. Yes, uh, that guy says. I think this is one of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.'s best episodes. The Daisy Coulson and Daisy Sosa dynamic are so good. That ending was so sad. What a good monologue. I don't think the that Nathaniel is the villain of the season. I think he's just a tool for Sybil, just like his father was. I don't expect, expect him to make it to the finale. I hope the team going their separate ways is a good thing and not forced upon them. Also, Daisy is 32 and Sosa is 37, so there isn't that big of an age gap. Okay. Well, <laughs> I mean, was like, let's can be the season. Uh, Chris says, Enoch specifically said her friends will live, but the team won't survive. He never mentioned Daisy dying or not. I really hope it doesn't happen, but I can see her death breaking the team. At least May, Colson, and Fitzsimmons probably won't, wouldn't want to be in S.H.I.E.L.D. anymore just straight up retire. I'm 100% opposed to her dying because that shit would hurt. For real. Uh, Day Daisy dying would break me, honestly, but hopefully they can all just retire on a happy farm somewhere. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> Hopes and dreams. Uh, Hopes Trent and Pitt dreams. comes through to say, everything the show does best was all in this one episode. Everything fired on all cylinders. One of the top five of all time best episodes. I completely <laughs> trust the writer's room of the show, so I have no doubts that they will bring the show to a close in a way that will give us all the feels, but ultimately leave us satisfied. Mm hmm <laughs> um, Nor Ahmed says, I love this episode so much, it takes a common trope and makes it into its own thing, and the last scene with Enoch was so deep and powerful, I agree, the only weak part of this episode was the after credit scene, like I would not have had hated it in any other episode, but this one was so emotional, I wasn't in the mood to deal with Malachi Cora, yeah, like, <laughs> for real. Yeah, everybody <laughs> like, see that I, shit after that. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> I will say uh, the Fitz is dead theory has been circling the internet. I just don't see it. For one thing, we heard Fitz's voice back when he sent the team to the past at the end of season six. We also know he's controlling the Zephyr's travel. Besides, would Gemma really wipe out her memories of his death? She would probably think it dishonoring his memory to do so, and if she did remove that memory, would she protect it enough to program Enoch to kill her to stop her from remembering? Seems extreme. It all doesn't add up, but what she remembered could be any number of things, and Fitz's death doesn't have to be it. Yeah. Fair point. I mean, I hope yeah. that's the case. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> um, and then Square One Brett had one additional comment uh, that says, So just like they did to us in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 3, Episode 13, parting shot during Bobby and Hunter's departure with a spy's goodbye. Oh, I love that episode so much. That's the one that you teared up on. Yeah, I love yeah. that episode so much. Um, the showrunners provide us with a phenomenal tear jerking, uh, tear jerking, excuse me, boss of an outro from Enoch, only to again bring us down by ending the episode with a Malik <laughs> Nathaniel, <laughs> similar to Gideon and his daughter at the end of episode thirteen. Can we say not a coincidence? Classic move from Ages of the Shield, just Man. classic. I think it's. Man. I love. I love the different perspectives. It's been. It's. Freaking hilarious. Too. I don't give a damn if y'all hate him. We gonna put he's in the show. <laughs> so the writer's like, you gonna y'all gonna just suck that up and right. take this. Take all this in your eyeballs. Uh Beta Artemis comes through to say this was a wonderfully written episode and amazingly well directed by Elizabeth herself. <clears throat> Joel Stoffer has been consistently awesome as Enoch. It's a shame we are losing him now, but Enoch sacrificing himself for the team is a powerful way to go, especially as it mirrors his sacrifice back in Season 5 to get the team home, and his death also gave Colson a moment of acceptance and reconciliation with his own situation of being a machine and how he handled life after death. Yeah. The loops were fun to see uh, them trying to figure everything out, though I was still a bit annoyed that it was Deke's death that they, they put a joke moment in. As for what is going on with Fitz, there's a lot of theories about him being dead, but that doesn't make much sense to me. We heard him speaking to Simmons at the end of season 6 when Simmons picked up the team at the temple and flew away. Also, they already killed him once before. Killing him again would just be pushing it too much, especially at this time would be the real Fitz with another one to replace him. Totally agree. I hope that's what they're thinking. Like, please. <laughs> uh, Sosa's speech to Daisy about knowing her type in an obvious, is an obvious reference to Peggy Carter, but also Jack Thompson, another character from the Agent Carter show. All people who are the type to fight the good fight at their own expense, own expense and run headlong into danger without consideration for themselves. It was sweet of Sosa to recognize that, it, that in Daisy and be there for her. I always felt like Daisy needed someone like Sosa who knows her limits and backs her up when needed, but also wouldn't hold her back from being who she is. Mm. Okay. Havoc 6280 says O is for other, P is for peoples. Wait, that's something different. Yeah, OP means overpowered. OPP. <laughs> uh, Madridista92 says, please react to Lost. Um, we already watched <laughs> Lost. Yeah, what you we were got? obsessed. Uh, <laughs> but this was well before our reaction days. Yeah. Um, so unfortunately, we can't. Otherwise, that would be amazing. We um, also lost the shit. We loved Lost. One of my greatest TV shows of all time. Adam Nelson comes through to say, my theory for what Enoch meant about this being the team's last mission other than a meta reference to this being the last season, is that, like you said, they'll split up after this is done. Starting with the most obvious ones, Sousa made out with Daisy, so he's going to die. Oh my god, that's horrible. That's legit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so that's, sad. It, it's legit, and he's not even uh, supposed to be in this time. So yeah, he's going to die. That is really sad. Because he's supposed to be dead right they now. They need to give Daisy a fucking break. <laughs> like, that would be horrible. I hope that doesn't happen. Um, Sousa made out... Oh, yeah. Colson will decide to turn himself off. I agree with that one. Mm -hmm. When we get back to present day, timeline changes will result in the rest of the S.H.I.E.L.D. calling Daisy the director she has been in the comics. <laughs> um, Deke will go back to his company but continue to consult with S.H.I.E.L.D. from time to time. Fitz and Simmons will be in charge of the new S.H.I.E.L.D. Science and Technology Academy. Yo-Yo will be in charge of one of the main... Um, field teams like she was at the beginning of Season 6. Mac will be second in command of S.H.I.E.L.D. Command of S.H.I.E.L.D. and or in charge of the Lighthouse. May will be in charge of either the Operations Academy or Internal Security for S.H.I.E.L.D. so she can use her powers to prevent someone from in the infiltrating the new S.H.I.E.L.D. like Hydra did with the old one. Okay. Everybody get promotions. Or their own division. Alright, in the last couple comments, Will Park says, There is no inoculation against sadness. I see what he did that. Enoch. Enoculation. <laughs> okay. 
Smart guy. <laughs> that was clever. You're a smart guy. All right, 12 Chaplin stops by to say, I don't want to think about it, but what if Fitz is dead? Uh, he also goes on to say, hello guys, so sad we lost Enoch. Why was Gemma crying? What did she remember? This was a very excellent episode. I think they reached 100 loops, or they reached 100 loops or more. Uh, Matthew, Will Matthew, what did I say? Matthew? Matthew Williams comes through to say, crazy theory incoming. I have thought since the season started that the finale would actually end up with Team Shield preventing the demise of uh, of Chronica 2 at the hands of Iz Izel. <coughs> that would be crazy. Uh, my crazy theory is that Sybil is secretly working with Fitz to build Nathaniel's team to work in conjunction with Team Shield to forward this goal. I don't know if there could be a better, more ridiculous team up to, to end the show with. Side benefit, we get to see Team Sarge against, again and save Jaco. Oh, I would love if they saved Chico. And the rest, Snowflake, as a consolation prize for Deke. Okay, cool. Those are all the comments then. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, so thank you guys for all those comments. L last episode was amazing, so it makes sense that there would be uh, a jump in comments. Keep those coming. Again, we'll yeah. feature as many of them as we can with these last couple episodes. But let's jump into episode 10 right now. Under the name John Garrett. Oh, it's Garrett. I was just now thinking that it was him. It's called the time strain. They did a good Set job finding somebody future. that would look like him as a younger yeah, person. Smile. Yeah, yeah, with yeah. the smile. Almost done prepping this matter. Prepare yourself. Most people don't like the ending. Wait, did you wash your hands? It will only work if you wash your hands. Actually, don't wash your hands. <laughs> it needs to be grimy. Yeah, it needs to be grimy. <laughs> But you have to bring back my daughter. We got one of them here. Uh, no. What kind of power is he getting? He can make a knife? That's what he's getting. Uh, Cora? Don't worry. But he didn't have power. Just didn't take it from what were you saying? Well, it's a different time. Though, so. Yes, he did. He always had that. You ever had power? Oh no. You know what I mean? 20 minutes out. This one, yeah. So now he'll get one of this one. Or he might not. He Why? might get to him before. You don't trust me? You seem pretty calm considering where we're headed. This fight is necessary. That probably helps. I sent him messages that disappeared into the depths of space. No answer. Fitz is out there. Whatever's happening right now is happening for a reason. We're gonna fix this and get back to him. Okay? Feel yeah. tingly. It goes away. Actually, it's not unpleasant. He yeah, this way we can find keeping them. <gasps> Waiting is the hardest part. You really are square, aren't you? Harsh, but yes. <laughs> They're so cute. Colson, come in. Afterlife is important to us, too. You don't know the first thing about it. She's been there. I'm just going to sneeze. Before your friends showed up, we'd never had an outsider find us. <sighs> She's no outsider. Go on. I'm sure. Go on, Matilda. Do you want me to walk up with you? I'll, I'll, I'll do it. Ask. Oh, sorry, babe. You ain't who I'm. You gotta get used to it. Daisy, do you copy? Daisy, come here. May, what's wrong? John Garrett's who win Nathaniel, and they have Gordon's powers. Safe. I've been looking all over. Is this when he dies, babe? Yes. <laughs> this is the end of the Daniel. Better call Yo-Yo. Well, I think that's the guard that has some powers now, right? Still might be some <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Let me call Yo-Yo. He's with John Garrett. I'll explain on the way back. Let's do your thing. Suffering for now. It's okay. We're safe. 
stupid power to make a knife. For the record, I'm digging the upgrade. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I mean, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, they didn't get to that part. Oh, see, it did. you didn't know. Wow, it's like a season finale of Dallas around here. I wanted to tell you what I think you said about your mother. Hey, you would be. B plus. Definitely room for improvement. She never yeah. quite got a whole thing. One day to take down the whole earth, huh? <laughs> Would she go crazy? He's not here for Johnny, and what's he after? Who's this Garrett fella anyway? Did he just be shot in the back? Did you just see Gemma? There you are. Just to shoot him. God! What do you want with Gemma? Why am I here? What do you want? My pal Sybil ran the numbers. And every outcome where we don't come out on top has one thing in common. Okay. All right, that was episode 10 of S.H.I.E.L.D. And all right, they threw a little twist in there. Nathaniel did not die on this episode, by the way. He is still trucking. Um, he wasn't so bad, though. I, I wasn't annoyed at all of him being the villain. Yeah. Uh, he did it. I thought, I thought it was it went toned through the down, and I felt yep. like it worked. Yeah. Went through the motions. Um, what do they need um, Simmons for? Obviously, they want to find out what fits. I guess that is the one out of four million things that keep that's keeping the Daniel from winning. And it's going to be where Fitz is. So if you take to where Fitz is, then Fitz can stop helping. They can go ahead and continue on with the world domination. And then wham, bam, boom. There you go. Solid episode, though. So can't wait to see how this ends off. Because now, now with this little twist in there, now you can see how the ending of this season is probably going to be good. Really, really good. That was a nice twist in there. Yeah, it makes it, I mean, the fact that they're going to find Fitz makes it pretty... I feel pretty confident that that fits yeah. in. Unless they get there and she's and like, he's see, he's already so dead. They done said, they done told us like more, probably more than two times already now. They've hinted that he's he not alive could, anymore. Even this episode, Jim and the, um, yeah, Simmons has hinted. I mean, but that's not hinting. She's a, 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 assuming. Assuming. Yeah. I mean, the show was telling us. Um, maybe, possibly, come prepare your mind. That as a possibility, show up, he not there. But that's just to psych us out so we can be super happy. So I love the there. Infinity War and game type uh, callback to uh, infinite amount of possibilities as far as like, how this could lost. lay out. Um, and Fitz being the common denominator in that. Mm -hmm. It re felt very reminiscent of uh, uh, Stark. Him being the one element that had to survive mm -hmm. in order for them to have their win or whatever. So I thought I love that callback. Jing um, and... Uh, Daisy having a sort of reconciliation to a certain extent I thought was heartbreaking. Is she dead, dead, though? She's dead. I mean, he just vibrated her dead. I mean, I think damn, she neck. went through a lot more to not die. I mean, maybe she, I, I, to me it felt like there's no point in having her dead only to not I mean, be for dead. a person who can live forever, I mean, I guess she was, she's not unstoppable. I mean, we killed her before. She's, yeah, I mean, but he literally had to cut her up into pieces. No, Daisy killed her, broke her back and everything. That's how she died last night. Oh, time. so she can die easily. She just, if, if nothing happens, she can live forever. So, okay. um, yeah, so I thought <clears throat> that, again, it's heart-wrenching for Daisy. Like, none of this stuff about Susa dying better happen because, like, Daisy just needs a solid win. Like, I don't know what that's going to be like, but um, I do feel like Cora's character's annoying to me. I think Nathan definitely, um, I thought he had some development this this episode made him less annoying, but to me, Cora, she just I don't know. A, she's like, just why a necessary you, thing, though, as, as so to be So raging that. out now. I don't know. Yeah. I, don't, I feel like it still doesn't work for me. She's a necessary bad guy who's probably going to be redeemed at the end. She, she's not a super-duper killer. I mean, she's unkilled already, but she don't want to live that life for sure. So she could probably be convinced to not do it. 
But her, that, her character is a, a yeah. miss for See, me. It's a throw. Um, it but I, I did necessary. like seeing uh, Yo-Yo utilizing her upgraded uh, power. I love uh, Matt commenting on it, too. I thought that yeah. was a great dynamic. That's real good. Um, but, yeah, so now oh, and having Garrett show up, I was thinking the whole good time, actor. too. I thought that was fantastic good casting. Actor. Even the way he like giggles, yeah. it seems very similar to the the actor that played Garrett. So yeah. I thought all that was fantastic. Um, and one of you guys mentioned this too that uh, it's going to be interesting to see if Nathaniel's uh, recruiting people if they're going to be all people that die, which seems to be the case because Garrett's definitely one of those people. So I thought that was a great uh, foresight. Um, wh mm -hmm. Whoever commented on that one because that definitely seems to be playing out. Um, but I obviously can't wait for the next episode. Yeah. But I feel like they're going to skip it and it's going to not be. <laughs> With Gemma and Deke, um, they're gonna like have a different storyline, and then it's gonna be like the finale. Yeah, when we they finally go come back um, to it with Fitz and them. But um, very I don't know interesting. Where, what else can you skip though? I mean, uh, well, I think they're probably just gonna stick with it. It's the I think it'd be great. Couple. I hope so. But yeah, but I, that was an interesting writer's choice right there to, to throw us off our game. So yeah, now I'm interested to see how this is gonna all play out. Yeah. All right, well, look, thank you guys again for watching another Real Talk Reaction for Marvel's Agent Shield Season 7, Episode 10. And until next time, people, peace.